Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes. Welcome back to this series all about playback in Dorico. So far, we've looked at setting up Dorico to use your preferred sounds for each of the instruments in your projects by way of playback templates. We've seen how expression maps are used to allow playback techniques to drive your loaded VST instruments. And in the next few videos, we'll examine these more closely. Let's start by expanding that section at the top, Expression Map Data. The metadata fields at the top are there for you to make your expression map distinguishable from others. It's very wise to give a new map a unique name that makes it easily identifiable. The other fields are locked by default, just for a bit of protection. So click on the padlock to make them editable. Every expression map needs an ID, and one will be cooked up automatically by Dorico using the name you enter. You can change this if you really feel it's necessary, but honestly, I don't tend to, as I don't want to risk giving it the same ID as another expression map. They need to be unique, and duplicates will end up overwriting existing maps. Changing the name of the expression map will update the ID anyway. So just leave it alone. Leave it. It can be useful to populate the other fields, especially if you're planning on sharing your expression map. You can include your name or your company name. You can set a version number, which can be handy if you update it in the future. For example, the legendary John Barron does a lot of these, and he uses the date in the format year, month, day for a version number. That way, also serving as a reminder of when he made the map. He's a clever guy. And you can use the description and plugin fields to give a bit of context for what the map is used for. But really, it's these four controls underneath the metadata section that I wanted to talk about in this video. The first option, allow multiple notes at same pitch, will generally just want to be left turned off. This doesn't affect the notation at all. You can have as many notes drawn as the same pitch as you like. This is just how they affect playback. Think of a case where you have repeated notes under a slur. By default, Dorico will lengthen notes under a slur, partly in order to make the notes sound more connected, but also because that's often how you trigger the legato technique of VST instrument presets. This can lead to a problem, however, because with repeated notes, you'll end up with the note on message of the next note being sent before the note off message of the previous note. Most VST instrument plugins can't cope with this. So by leaving this setting unchecked, Dorico compensates by shortening the notes to avoid an overlap. What's particularly clever, though, is that Dorico will still recognize that you want a legato technique. And so this allows the expression map to trigger a change in the VST library. Some older MIDI modules can cope with multiple notes at the same time. And it's possible that some VST plugins do too, which is why the option's there. Dorico's live stage feature allows you to position your instruments on a virtual stage, providing an intuitive way of setting the mixer's pan and effect settings. These settings are saved as stage templates and can then be applied to entire ensembles in other projects. Some VST instrument libraries, however, record performers in their standard ensemble positions. For example, Spitfire Audio's BBC Symphony Orchestra library and so there is no need for Dorico to then apply its own live stage settings. By having the option in the expression map, it means you can choose whether or not to apply the stage template on an instrument by instrument basis. Different sound libraries approach the playback of microtonal music using different methods. Steinberg's libraries tend to use VST note expression and other libraries that use Hallion will be the same. VST note expression has the advantage of being applied per note. So you can have multiple notes in a chord, each with their own tuning. Other plugins might not support VST note expression, and so can use pitch bent, which will of course apply to all notes on the channel, or the older VST2 D 
detuned message. So check the documentation of your particular VST plugin if you wish to utilize microtonal playback and set accordingly. Dorico knows how a handful of plugins approach microtonal playback. So the option defaults to auto and Dorico will do its best to work out what to do. If you're not hearing the effects of microtonal accidentals in your playback, then you might need to try a different setting here. The final option in this section is regarding the range of your instrument's pitch bend. The control works in semitones, so a two here means pitch bend can be applied up to a whole tone in each direction. And what it's doing is effectively setting the threshold of the key editor MIDI pitch bend lane. Pitch bend is often restricted to a whole tone. Think about the common case of the pitch bend wheel on synthesizers, where you tend not to want the extent of the pitch bend to be greater than a whole tone. This is partly because of how difficult it would be to actually control without it starting to sound a bit silly. However, libraries such as Note Performer have a wider pitch bend threshold because they're designed to be controlled by a computer rather than by hand and can then achieve some of the interesting effects written into orchestral music. So that covers the expression map data section of the dialogue. Join me again over the next few videos as I delve deeper into switches, how they can be controlled and what you can achieve with them. I very much hope you've enjoyed this video. It really would mean the world to me if you were to hit the like button below. I am always so appreciative of your support. Thank you so much. And please do subscribe to the Dorico channel to see more videos like this one. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.